Hello everybody, it's Obsidian Mad Haven here today, and we're going to be taking a look at what we have so far for the Basante. Now, the Basante, it's got a nickname over on PC that I just don't feel like sharing over here on YouTube. That gives you an idea like what they mean by there's a nickname to it. But the, the, the way that this thing is put together right now... You know, whenever it comes down to ooh, resetting the boards and it pushes you all the way back to, like, not even looking at the tank you wanted to look at. Uh, three hours later. Ooh, where are you? I'm so blind. Okay, there it is. Um, Whenever tanks come over to console, you know, sometimes there's a big difference compared to PC. And the big difference console to, like, from PC to console... Is quite a big one. So real fast, let's take a look at this. Look at the reloads. We get 11.51, 14.38, 16.30. So your first shell is going to take you 16.3 seconds over on PC without a crew, without a gun rammer, with nothing on it, just base reload. Your next shell, 14.38, 11.51. That doesn't sound too bad, because once you get your crew on, you get your gun rammer on, you know, you're going to be looking at an 8-second reload. It's going to be nice. And then you come over here to console, and honestly, they... Over on PC, this tank is called the Pissante, because... No one was happy with it whenever they first got it. Now, our gun dispersion values compared to PC, we have two less. Well, two more than them. They have 0.4, we have 0.42. Not really much of a big difference there because, you know, 0.4 is 0.4. 0.42, it's not much of a difference. It's marginal, really, but it's still really bad gun dispersions. Vertical stabilizers is going to be your best friend. Accuracy, run and gun, snapshot. And Gunsmith, I do believe Gunsmith is still broken. You can still get away with using Gunsmith. But look at those reloads. The first shell in PC takes 16.3 seconds. First shell in console takes 22.5. I, I don't know what they were thinking about that extra 6.2 seconds on the reload. Combined with that, 20 seconds on your second shell, which is almost an entire 6.6 .6 seconds longer. And then 17.5, which is a whole 6.01 longer. But I honestly do not recommend to buy this tank right away. Hold off on buying the Basante. Just because this reload is absolutely atrocious. And then they say its rate of fire is 9.47 rounds a minute. Yet, if you fire off all of your rounds, you're going to be kind of just stuck in this situation that you don't want to be stuck in. So to give you an idea on how bad the Basante reload actually is, 17.5 seconds, okay? 17.5. Let, let's let's not forget this number. 17.5. I'm I'm sorry, dude. I'm I I just think this is redonkulous that they're adding a tank in like this. So for instance, three shot autoloader, 360 alpha, 26 second reload with a fully trained crew. And then continuing on, we got the T32 right here with the 320 alpha with the 7.3 second reload. You got the TS-5. We can't really use TS-5. Um, continuing on. Let's actually take a look here. Chimera. 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 15.5 seconds with a... I believe it's a 440 Alpha. 202 base penetration. This tank... If, if you were shooting this tank head-to-head, -head, it would outright kill you in the Basante. The Chimera would out-DPM you. Even if you are just firing off one shell at a time. Don't get me wrong, you have those two extra shells that you can use, but it's just... It, it's single shot reload is not competitive in the slightest. 14.74 for a 490 alpha. You would not be able to out-trade the icebreaker. Um, 
All right, the, and and the best comparison I got for this would actually be the OE4. Coming over here, taking a look at the module viewer. Um, 17.55 reload on that tank. And yeah, I'm just really disappointed with how it was all together. And it, it's just a little bit sad that they're bringing in a tank literally almost 40% worse and it's the first time I've ever seen them bringing in tank 40% worse. Now, I'm done talking about the Passante. I'm going to buy it no matter what. I have 17,500 gold. I'm going to get it. And I'm going to let you guys know exactly how I feel about the Passante. Tell that I'm actually going to remove my cam. But we got a match inside the Kurt. Now, I'm, I'm pretty sure that you guys have had situations where you, you get hit hard enough that you feel like you're knocked out of the match immediately. A lot of people have. And even if you're low health, you still have a gun. You can still fire. And if you know your tank, you know your armor loadout, you know exactly what you can do. You can play around with your armor. You know, try and bait shots. Try to force people to shoot you. Try and make them waste their ammunition or put them on a reload. That way your team can push up. And keep mid-range to long range if you're low health and you can't really get in to do the fight. Now, I, I kind of spoiled it. I'm going to be low health. I'm going to get hit extremely hard within the first, I don't know, three minutes of the match. And by the time I got hit, I was actually getting ready to stop the recording because I'm all like, this is going to be a short match. But I, I left it going. I did. And it turned out this match was actually absolutely fantastic. Because there, there's so many moments inside this replay that we have understanding of our armor and just ways to control it. So right at the bat there, you know, I locked my turret, moving around, trying to get organized. I should have unlocked it a while back, but I didn't unlock it. Taking two shots, shot from the left, shot from the right, and I'm wondering where the shot landed. I couldn't exactly find it. Uh, even going over the replay, I couldn't find it myself. If you guys saw it, let me know, because I, honest to God, could not find it. So I kind of gave up and looking for it but the Kree of it's, um this is one of those tanks that if you guys don't have it buy it honestly it's got some of the best armor inside tier 8 and if you play this tank correctly its armor is comparable to a tier 9 so you got that 140 top plate you got the 90 millimeter low plate you have 195 turret armor um, I don't use a gun rammer on my Kree of it's one I actually go for the 5-5 uh, five, five bonus. Actually, no, I go for the traction system. I use the traction system on my Kree Vets 1. Just because the traction system, 10% um, top speed, so it's reverse speed's already 20, and then adding that extra 10% on it, you know, bumps you up to 22. And for me, that, you know, depending on what your reverse speed is, your reverse speed can make one of the biggest differences in inside of a match. So, so far, we're down to 408 hit points left. I'm getting absolutely rushed right now. It's all about trying to hold myself and fires off another shell. I take one more gunner down, gun broken. Time to get realigned. So far, we've ricocheted 1,270. We've dealt 2,093. Even if I was to get knocked out by this point, I would be perfectly okay because I've done more than what my tank is worth. I've ricocheted a good amount and I even have some assist damage to stack on top of it. But the one-hit wonder, you know, we occasionally have those matches where we become a one-hit wonder, and we just have an absolute blast. So a lot of people, whenever they go against a tank and they see someone low health, more than likely you're going to get focused out. Um, for me, I was really surprised that I did not get focused out, and that the ISM, my teammate that I had, he pulled up in front of me, you know, he wants to keep the gun inside the game, that's his goal. So far, pulling out just a tad bit, trying to get the angle on the armor to try and assist the ISM. And right here, I'm saying sorry because I backed up. And as soon as I backed up, his um, side armor got hit, which honestly, yeah, that was my fault. And, you know, whenever you have a tank like this to Kriavets, and you see someone low health, let's say that Panzer IV on the enemy team, if the Panzer IV really wanted to take me out, he would be loading a high explosive. Now, whenever you see tanks, tanks low health, normally you don't see high explosive shells flying across the map. You don't see people getting hit with HE, cough, cough artillery. But 
Uh, we'll, we'll talk about artillery another day. I, I, I'm not exactly a big fan of what happened to me the other day with artillery. Um, I got hit for 1,200 on, what was it, the uh, 252U. I got hit for 1225 and literally got knocked out of the match within two seconds. Basically getting one shot top tier, literally three tier eights per team. I was ready to get this going, ready to get it slapped up, and boom, I got slapped and deleted in under, I'd say, three seconds. And that that's not fun. All right, second shot in the Tiger P, we missed. That's sad. But, you know, we went from 1,200 ricocheted to 3,005 ricocheted because what we were doing... Lining up right, trying to use the armor, preventing the enemy from being able to push down, waiting for the team up on the left side. We didn't want to play aggressive, and once we did play aggressive, everyone on our team was low health. Everyone pushed, and honestly, you can't beat that, because if everyone's pushing in, and you have the entire team pushing in, and everyone's low health, you know, you're going to have like three or four dudes fire at the same guy. That one guy is going to die, but then everyone's on a reload, and it's going to allow you to get into position, get locked down, and honestly have an absolutely great game now basante i truly do not recommend you buy the tank the day it comes out wait for a review to pop up if, if it's not from me if it's from clone guy if it's from you know any of the other youtubers out there that you watch or if you're watching it over on twitch and you're watching guys play it hear their opinion and and make sure they know what they're doing with the tank Un unless you're looking forward to just getting the Basante because you want the Basante, then get the Basante. But just know that whenever it comes to console, its reload, if it stays at the state that it's in, is going to be absolutely abysmal. And it's not going to be competitive, even though it's a three-shot autoloader. Other three-shot autoloaders in the game have a better base reload than the Basante. And to me... That is very, very sad because the T-77 with its 32 second reload can get those three shells loaded with 299 base penetration and absolutely shred it without much of a problem. Now, you're, you're 22.5 seconds and then you have a 20 second. You're going to be out of the fight for 42.5 seconds. Depending on how your crew's loaded out, I'm honestly a little bit excited to be able to jump in, check out what the crew looks like on top of the tank itself, and see how well you can get that reload down. Because depending if the if your first shell reload is 11 seconds, I'll be okay with 11 seconds. 11 seconds is a really decent reload, especially on console, but you have tanks out there like the Kurt right here. You can get this thing's reload down to about 10.5 or even 9.8 seconds with gun rammer, a fully trained crew, all the bonus perks, for instance, the Brothers in Arm, which is now Boron Leader, rapid loading, and if you want to put the icing on top and kind of risk it, you can use Last Stand and Adrenaline Rush to try and bolster the crap out of your tank. But the Passante coming out, I just recommend that you hold off for a little while, just because the stats that that tank has right now they they do not look good in the slightest. I would say save your money, save your time. Un unless you're a collector and you just want to get it, then get your hands on it. Now, I don't really know what to say about the tank. Its top speed is 50. Um, PC, they gave it a power to weight buff. Console's not going to be getting that power to weight buff. Uh, they gave it 634 to give it 13.17. Over here on console, it only has 600, which, you know, it, it, you're going to feel it lacking a lot more. You're not going to be able to see that top 50 speed. But when the tank comes out, I'll give it a try, and I'll make sure that within the first day of the tank coming out, so tomorrow, after you guys have watched this, I'm going to be putting about 20 or 30 matches inside that tank and posting my honest opinion on it to let you know if it's worth buying, worth holding off, or skipping entirely, or to maybe see later down the road if they decide to buff it, because that reload is absolutely abysmal. OE4s are going to reload faster than you, and they're going to be more aggressive against you in Tier 10 matchmaking. And how often do you see Tier 10s inside your Tier 8s? Quite often. And the T-77 
110E4 is a very common tank that you run into inside tier 10 matchmaking. So, knowing that he's going to have a better reload than you and a higher alpha does kind of hurt. And I find that Basante is going to be a lot more punishing to players who decide to try and fire off all three of their shots. Just because by the time you fire your third shot, in the time it takes you to reload your third shot, an autoloader is already going to be loaded. And I'm just hoping that they, they rebalance it. I don't know who the super testers are that are testing these tanks before they're even added into the game. If they even exist, I honestly don't even think our super testers exist. I think people on the forums just have a title. And that's literally it. A title with nothing behind it. It's just a title. Because if I was super testing and the Basante came out with a reload like that, and I was going up against, let's say, another Russian tank, or I'm going up against another American tank that has literally its base reload outmatching mine tenfold. For instance, the T-54E2, as I'm trying to find it, do, 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 do. actually, you know what, E-75TS, it's the most recent one added to the game. Okay, it came out just the other day. Let's take a look here. What is our reload? 13.5 seconds with a 360 alpha. This tank will absolutely shred the Basante head-to-head. -head. Not just that, Basante only weighs, you know, 48 tons, while the E75TS weighs 80 tons. E75TS, all you gotta do is back up a tad bit, ram into the side, back up a tad bit, ram into the side. Every single little ram you do, it's gonna be 80 to 100 damage. Plus, you're going to be keeping them tracked, and it, it's just those little numbers stack up a lot. Basante, it doesn't have the weight behind it to be able to get that down and track people, hold them there, but who knows? We'll have to see how it is. So, until next time, I hope you guys enjoyed, guys enjoyed the video, as my English today is just beyond awful. But, Basante, please hold off. If you guys liked the video, leave a like, comment, subscribe. Um, until next time... Yeah, more than likely, I'll be doing a live stream over on Twitch playing the Basante the second it's released. And yeah, we'll just have to see how it goes. So, kind of hoping it's honest to God, not a waste. Because if it's a waste, I mean, this reload, com comparing it to PC, I know it's bad to compare stuff to PC from console, but whenever there's this big of a difference... I, I need to complain about it. I'm sorry, you guys. Well, I'm, I'm not sorry. Screw being sorry. No, this is the war gaming. Who is testing your game? I would gladly test it. You have no idea. I would get my clan together and we would go in. And my viewer base that knows me, you know I will spend a very long time on a single tank just to make sure it comes into the game balanced, not overpowered, because I want to see the game grow. I want to see it get better. And the only way to make it better is by taking a step to do so. Wargaming, it doesn't seem like they're taking those steps. And I know some people like Cold War. Okay? I don't mind Cold War. It's just the reason why I'm so mad at the fact that they added Cold War is because the balancing issues in World War II, they're skipping past them. The T-110E4 has a slower reload than the OE3 on PC, yet on console, it's reversed. The OE3 is turretless, it's slower, yet it has a slower reload. To me, that makes no sense in how they balance that. So, you know, my, my frustrations, I'll voice them. I'll let you guys know. Because it's just a little bit irritating whenever they go out and they do something like this, and then they add it to the game, and they expect us just to be all like fry saying, here, take my money, you know, but honestly, I'm going to give them my money. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt in the Basante, and I'm going to try it. And if it comes into the game readjusted, which I hope it does, I'll let you guys know if you should buy it. Because I've been super excited about the Basante for a long time. And another thing that I'm super excited about would be the double barrel tanks, the 7032. You have no idea how excited I am for those 7032s. Okay, I'm monologuing. This is going on way too long. It was nice having you guys here. Till next time, see you on the battlefield.